So welcome everyone to the final session of uh, Performance and Capacity Stream. My name is Piara and I'm going to be chairing the session. We're very pleased to have uh, Stephen Thomas from SMT Data. This session is going to be a recorded presentation and Stephen's going to be here um, with us at hand to answer any question towards the end of the uh, presentation. So if you have any questions, please do feel free to use the chat box um, to type your questions or also you can ask me to um, unmute you so you can ask your question in uh, by voice as well. We'd appreciate if you could leave us some session feedback. It will help us going into next year with um, any changes that we might need to make. Um, so yeah, any feedback will be very valuable and it only takes 60 seconds to complete. I'll leave a link in the chat box um, as well for the, for the feedback link. So I'm now gonna pass it over to you, Stephen, to uh, start the presentation. Great, thanks a lot, uh, Piara. Yeah, I'm Stephen Thomas. I'm Chief Technology Officer at SMT Data. This isn't my presentation. It's a presentation by Alisa Bodengård from uh, Top Denmark, a big insurance company here in Denmark, and uh, my colleague, uh, Carsten Rasmussen, um, talking about how Top Denmark does uh, performance capacity management on their on the mainframe. Um, so it is a video that they that they did uh, recently, uh, which I'll just uh, play here. It's about a half hour video, uh, and once it's done, I'm happy to take any questions uh, at the end. Uh, uh, I think everybody's on mute here, so we'll take be taking questions in the uh, in the chat. Great, thanks. So I'm just going to share my screen here and start up the video. Yeah, hopefully you're seeing the video now. So I'll just I'll just start it and let uh, Carson and Lisa speak for themselves here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the presentation. Hope you can hear me. Um, month to month, year to year, capacity planning. I'm here with Elise Bunkor to do a presentation, not about the glory details coming from SMF and other logs, but about the process that takes place in a capacity planning in real life. Um, with the presentation here is with personal experience. So it's uh, just to take it in. Um, Elise here will do the presentation coming up, starting with the next slide. And thank you, Carsten. So my name is Elise Bongor, and I'm 54 years old, and I'm married and have four children. I have a background uh, as a computer scientist. Most of my professional career, I've been uh, working in the financial companies. Most of the time I've been employed in IT, uh, but I've also been a developer in IT. I've been a project manager. Um, I've been a product owner in uh, the agriculture division in, at Top Denmark. And now I'm a solution manager for license management and the SaaS platform and the mainframe platform in IT operation at Top Denmark. So that was a little bit about me. So what do I do? I have my technical team, so my mainframe team, and I make sure that the day-to-day -day work are being handled in the team and they are being nursed. So we have some challenges. Uh, what are we going to do with them? What, how can we fix it and stuff like that? Uh, are there any issues that needs to be handled? Top Denmark is not running everything themselves. Uh, In-house, as I just said, I have my technical team and they are handling software customization, DBA management, DBA, uh, sorry, storage management, and scheduling management and release management. So that is the mainframe team's uh, main, um, uh, what do you say, uh, task. work task. Yeah, thank you, Kathleen. So I have the technical team and then I have the management group, not to forget them. Uh, I have to keep those happy. I have to make sure that the system are up and running because that will make them happy. So I have to make sure that there's no problem. I have to keep them interesting in the day-to-day -day work. 
uh, make sure that they can see that the benefit of the work we are doing, it's paying off. And uh, I have to document it. So I have to keep the management happy to be able to keep my platform good and solid. But sometimes uh, there are stuff we are not uh, in our control. And uh, some of it is the legal monster. We have the audit, the rules and the regulation that we have to implement. And then we have um, the things that we have outsourced to Kindle. That will be the mainframe box. It will be the IBM suite, uh, software licenses, uh, the IBM pro program product installations. And then there is, of course, me, Wonder Woman, who has to bring everything together and make sure that uh, that we get the right things done in time. That was a little bit about me. Then there is the, the company I work in. I work here for Top Denmark Insurance, and it's a Danish company, uh, and uh, we're taking care of claims and life. There are, uh, we can date the company back to 1898. So we've been on the market for many years. There are about 2,400 employees and uh, plus 800 consultants. Uh, we have today six old core insurance systems and one customer systems, and it's all homemade. Uh, we are transforming into two new standard system, which is uh, Salesforce and Guidewire. We have furthermore uh, one claim system and one reinsurance system, and it's also homemade. And then we have a lot of different data warehouses and a data lake. So all in all, Top Denmark has a lot of system that we have to take care of. But Top Denmark is more than just an insurance company. We are taking care of the employees and we have a employee branding, which is called More You. And uh, that means that we want to have more fun. We have to be healthier and we have to be braver. So now the interesting is starting. And this is one of my favorite slides uh, I got from Carsten. And the reason uh, for that, I think this is a really good slide, is that the picture say more than a thousand words. I can see my capacity limit, which is the blue, uh, which is the red line, sorry. And I can see the red line, which is my uh, payment line, which is also my group capacity limit. On this slide, you see a period from two months uh, and it's 24 seven. And I'm using my total capacity. So the more blue this, this slide is, the more happier I am. Uh, so I have two types of uh, capacity allocation, the plan one, and then the here and now uh, capacity. And this is what leads me to the next slide. Now we are zooming in, and this is September and October, but it's only working days from 8, till, uh, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, we had a mishap during the night, early in the morning, on the 28th, uh, where the batch was moved into the early morning hours. And that means then when the batch stopped running, on, that means uh, running the batch on top of the on online, which is not so good. Um, so we are trying to stay within our planned uh, capacity. So to do that, I bought two times 100 extra MIPS, so that the batch problem during the daytime not will uh, affect the online. And what you can see uh, in a minute will be that uh, that works very well. So we're taking a dive into the 28th of December. And we do it a little bit further down. Here you can see the blue one during the daytime, which is the batch that is uh, running on top of the online. Uh, and I can also see if you look at the yellow arrow that um, the batch is missing. So that means there was a, there was a problem and we had to stop and then um, fix the problem so that we could run the batch. We have to run the batch every day so we will be ready for the next batch uh, during the night. So buying 200 MIPS more in your extra capacity, can I see help me this time? It's not always it does, but this time it was a good decision. Uh, so you can see the batch was running, that's the blue one. And uh, we're using the white space, uh, the available capacity uh, and the
So I think the sound's gone off there, Stephen. Yeah, let me have a look at that. Hang on. Sorry, there's some uh, technical difficulties here. Let me try and restart that. So then we have year to year reporting. When are you working with the management group? They need to be able to see the result. And this is why we have the year to year reporting. And I'm going to dive into this next. This is the really interesting part when you're in the management group, because this picture they love. Uh, so they can see from April to May 21 and from April to May 22. Um, and many companies will have increased the capacity year to year, but in top Denmark, we actually managed to decrease our capacity from year to year. At first, we looked into the online capacity. We were tuning and making changes to all the online applications and moving and restricting the batch away from the online period. When that looks okay, we went into the batch. Uh, so we looked at the night hours and see, saw what could be tuned and what could we move to areas where we didn't uh, have that much um, load on the MIPS. Can I ask a question? Of course. All the red lines last year, mm -hmm. was that the hours where you had high CPU usage? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. So the more red it is, the more sad I am, the more blue. So we want to get rid of the red because the red are where I need to put my capacity up. So I will have more capacity because I only have a certain amount on my limit and I need to stay under that. So when it's red, it's really not good. So the black line is the group capacity. Yeah, and yes. as you yeah, and as you can see, the black line has moved down 200 MIPS because of, we have moved a lot of uh, stuff away from the online and uh, we made it more Brown, can you say that in English? Probably. <laughs> um, but also, you still have a couple of hours uh, going beyond the black line, but you, they, you survive due to the fact it's only one hour. Yeah. yeah. So if it has been more than four hours, you would have been squeezed down to the black line. Oh, yes. And then, the limit. Yeah. and then I would have been really red. Yeah. So what we're doing with this one, we are, <coughs> we are diving into the red line, seeing what was the reason for it being red and is there anything that we can move away so when i take 200 mips off my limits uh, if i hadn't done anything there would have been a lot more red than last year yeah. so you can see i've really been my team has really been working hard to get rid of the red ones and a couple of red lines is okay due to the fact that it could be a bad job yeah there you have no Warm feelings for bad jobs during online time? Nope. No. I don't, but during the night, I love bad jobs. Okay. But not in your online. So uh, that me, leads me to that we have also built some uh, resource um, groups to uh, to selected workloads where we can um, we can put batch jobs and SAS users into these boxes and say you can only use this amount of, of CPUs. So resource group is a controlled way of of making the users yeah. uh, act the way we want. Yeah, with only a selected amount of capacity. Yes. Yeah. WLM policy, workload manager policy is very important. Um, in this case, there will be a, a night policy, a day policy and a weekend policy. Um, so the automation is setting up the WLM policy depending on the shift, meaning that you have a workload manager policy for the, your prime workload. Yeah. yeah. Which leads us to the next slide, because this is uh, one of the ways I do. This slide is uh, really good for you seeing when you, I need to see the trends, seeing how's it going a month. I monitor month to month and the year to year to make sure that my workload 
uh, doesn't exceed my capacity plan. So this is one of the slides that I'm at least once a week are looking at. And this one is another one of my favorite pictures. Uh, the first finding, I don't know, can you see the error? I have uh, a deep dive um, on the first finding I have. And that on, was on the green graph. On the green graph, sorry, yeah. And maybe the error is there. So it's on this part, on the green error, uh, I can see that was where we went from the set 13 to my set 15 uh, mainframe. So that gave me a lot of more capacity. And the green line expressed is the CPU seconds per kick transaction. Yeah. So it's a measure of how well are things doing. Uh, you can see all kinds of things for the changes that happens in your kicks environment. And the blue line is the graphic to the left, meaning that you can see how much how much capacity, how many MIPS did your kicks system in this case. You can see the kick system to the right. Um, we have fairly eight nine uh, kick systems. Uh, how much capacity in total did these uh, kick systems selected kick systems for this graphic? Yeah. Uh, how much did they use totally? My second finding is uh, on this block on the green one as well. There is a little mountain. And the reason for that was that uh, we had the, our claim system um, who are using the DB2 on the mainframe um, had made a bug. So it used a lot more capacity than necessary. And you can see after a couple of days, they fixed the, the bug and it went pretty nice after that. And then you have another little bit of mountains uh, on the green light, uh, green line. And this finding uh, is our, our release. We have a monthly release. And on this one, we had a developer who has made some really bad code. So we had the, the developer to fix it. And uh, right after, it went back down. So that was good. So you can see. The green line after that is almost the same, but it has a little bit uh, where it's going down on uh, the last of September. And what happened here was uh, one of my DBAs uh, was looking into a DB2 table and find found uh, an index that uh, could be improved. So he put another index on one of the tables and it went a little bit further down. So that's really good. So what I have here is our result of tuning and moving our workload around uh, so we can use the MIPS 24-7. And uh, I can see I'm happy because the regression line has decreased. Um, you can tune and move workload around, but only to a certain point. Uh, when you have tuned the system to where it's only new things that will come in, uh, it won't be going further down. You can just more or less keep it steady. So one point you will see more flat line uh, in the future for my systems, but it doesn't mean that I have to stop doing the performance optim optimizations. Um, this is an ongoing task I will have to do every day and year after year. But I just talk about the, I have just talked about the past. And I'm also wondering how it's looking in the future. Um, here you can also see uh, an analyze of uh, my workload. If you look to the left of the screen, there's a lot of uh, pink in the middle. And it shows a lot of kicks transaction workload. Could we talk a little bit about what what is it actually we see on this picture here? Because we we see workloads, right? Yeah. We see SMF72 uh, as being the source of this one, meaning that we make every, all the workload 100% and then how many percentage of the workload is the unaccounted and how much is system production kicks workload? That was the purple one, right? Yeah. Okay, so we get all the workloads shown here. And we can see how big a percentage the purple workload is. Yeah. So out to the left, it's it's last more, year. Yeah, it was last year, and it's quite a lot. 
uh, if you compare it to the right side, where is uh, it has uh, decreased? So the kicks workout actually has it's decreased going down, yeah, as shown on the previous slide. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But we can wonder where has it gone? Here I can see my DB2 DDF transaction has increased. So there are still a lot of work going on, uh, but it just means that the business are still doing the same amount of work, maybe a little bit more, but it's on our new capacity. That means that we are working, we are, we are changing from the mainframe to the decentralized uh, systems, but they are still using the DB2. And the number of transactions actually raised, meaning you moved something from your traditional KICS systems yeah. to new applications running in the Windows environment. Yes. Yeah. And they increased them in numbers, so actually you moved some business to the new application areas. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. But uh, I've been talking a lot about the past and how we're looking into what we have done and what has been wrong, but uh, I also have to predict and say what's what are going on. Um, so this one helps me to predict uh, what I'm looking into in the future. So I know or at least have an idea of uh, how I'm going to handle uh, 2023. So I make sure that I have enough MIPS, but I don't have too many MIPS. Um, so I use this for my budget input. So I take the history from uh, from 21 and all the new workloads in 22 and all the uh, workload that I expect uh, in 23. I deduct that from the offload uh, from my mainframe. What I expect is going to the decentralized systems. And then as I make I got, uh, organic growth, um, which is not really explainable. Uh, and all the change applications uh, I also have to make sure that I have some capacity extra for those. And this is what takes me to this slide, which uh, showed the 22 and what I expect for 23. So as you can see, it's almost uh, steady, but it's going down. So I have it decreased in my MIPS and I will take those probably uh, 100 down next year. So how reliable is this? It's actually quite reliable. Uh, I would say I've done this now for three years. And um, when I started working in IT operation, uh, we had 3,500 MIPS and now we are at uh, 30, 3,000 yeah, MIPS. Um, so I would say it's actually quite reliable and it's a good tool to make sure that that I don't have too much capacity and I use my capacity right. So how is it actually done? Because you have to do the measurements still month by month in order to follow the plan yeah. to the keep up. Yeah, because there's not two months there is uh, alike. Um, in April, we have the Easter and there's not many work days. So April will always be a low month. Uh, so I have to make sure that I have the capacity there. And if you look at January or December, they will be high because it's just where we are turning the year and everything has to be done right on this time. So those months will be heavy. So somewhere in between I have to have enough capacity for the hard month and still for the low month. Uh, but the way I'm handling that right now is that when I have the holiday, the Easter's, uh, summer holidays, stuff like that, I will actually go in and for a month or two, uh, depending on which month it is, I would uh, take capacity off. So you will adjust from month to month? Yeah. The, the, the capacity you yeah. buy from the outsourcing. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why the policy is so important to look at all the time. So you make sure that that the business doesn't feel that you're taking off the capacity. Okay. Uh, well, we reached the end here. Um, we are uh, been through the presentation from Top Denmark here, Elise. Thank you.
Um, yeah, so that was the uh, presentation. I uh, sorry about the glitch in the middle. It's because I tried to to mute my computer, but uh, of course that muted the sound also. So I hope that didn't disturb people too much. I hope you got it all. Any uh, questions? You're also welcome to to write questions in the uh, chat uh, if you have any based on this, and I'll answer them as as well as I can. I'm fairly familiar with the top Denmark situation as well. Thanks very much for that, Stephen, for, for, for playing the presentation. Um, so far, no questions in the chat. Just as a reminder, if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the chat box to ask. And if you just want to contact us uh, offline, uh, I think at the, the, the last uh, uh, slide in the presentation had had my contact details there. Uh, you're also just welcome to look at look us up at the smtdata.com if you want any further information. Brilliant. Okay, well, yeah, there's there's certainly nothing coming into uh, the chat. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for your participation, everybody. And uh, yeah, continue to have a good uh, GSE. Yeah. Yep, yeah, thank you very much, Stephen. Please yeah. also pass our our thanks to Karsten and uh, Top Denmark as I well. Will pass them on for that help, and thanks everyone for for joining yeah. the GC um, final session um, at uh, in the next hour at five PM UK. There will be a keynote. Um, wanted to thank the organisation team, all the speakers, everyone that joined, um, all the participants that joined um, over the last few days. Uh, we really made it a successful conference. Uh, so. Hope you enjoy the keynote and hopefully see you in person in November when we do this um, at Whit Whittleby Hall. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye now.